Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This talk is about mean variance portfolio optimization and how the variance does not measure risk. The idea in mean variance portfolio optimization is to combine assets so as to maximize the mean return and minimize the variance. This is also known as Markowitz portfolio optimization or modern portfolio theory. The variance is commonly believed to measure investment risk, but we will show in the next few ex examples that this is false. The rate of return on a portfolio is the weighted sum of the asset returns. The weights must sum to one, and if we have a long only portfolio, then the weights must be non-negative. If we can short sell, then the weights can be negative as well. The mean of the portfolio rate of return is the weighted sum of the mean asset returns. And the variance of the portfolio return is this sum down here, where we sum over the indices i and j for the weight of one asset, the weight of another asset, multiplied by the covariance of the asset returns of those two assets. The covariance measures how much these asset returns change together. So the covariance is positive if the asset returns have a tendency to increase together, and the covariance is negative if one asset return increases and the other decreases. If the covariance is zero, then there is no correlation between the two asset returns. This picture over here shows what is known as the efficient frontier. We have four assets, McDonald's, S&P 500, Walmart, and Coca-Cola. We can combine these four assets in portfolios by changing the weights. To understand this plot properly, you need to study the paper, which is linked to at the end of the talk. But for now, just think of these as four different assets, which have mean returns on this axis here, and they have the standard deviation on this axis down here. The feasible set is all possible combination of these four assets. And the feasible set is not really shown here, but it is behind this or to the right of this uh, curve here. The curve in black is called the efficient frontier. And there's a small error in the plot. It should have been down to this dot here, and there should have been a black line here <coughs> as well. The gray line is called the inefficient frontier. All the points on the efficient frontier, not just these dots here, but all points on the lines have maximum mean for a minimum variance. We can find the efficient frontier from the mean and variance from the previous slide and using algorithms, which you can find in a textbook. The idea is that we want to invest in a portfolio on the efficient frontier because it has an optimal trade-off between the mean return and the variance of the return or the st standard deviation of the return. However, variance does not measure risk. Consider this simple example. We have two assets A and B. Asset A has the possible returns minus 4%, minus 5% or minus 6%. The mean return for asset A is minus 5% and the sample standard deviation is 1%. Asset B has possible returns 5%, 10%, or 15%. The mean is 10% and the standard deviation is 5%. The returns are assumed to be dependent so that if asset A has return minus 4%, then asset B has return 5%, and so on. This means the returns are perfectly anti-correlated and the coefficient is minus 1. The minimum variance portfolio, that is, where the variance is as low as possible, has weight for asset A, which is five divided by six, and the asset B weight is one divided by six. The portfolio mean is minus two and a half percent, and the portfolio standard deviation or variance is zero. This means that all possible outcomes of the minimum variance portfolio are minus two and a half percent. That is a loss of two and a half percent, but, if we instead had invested in asset B, we would either get 5%, 10%, or 15%. So it is obvious that asset B is a far better investment than the minimum variance portfolio. So 
the minimum variance does not measure minimum risk at all. In the previous example, we had negative returns for asset A, and those could be filtered out by having a constraint on the portfolio optimization that we must have positive returns for the assets. So let's try and replace asset A returns with 3%, 2%, and 1%, so the mean is 2%. These are all positive, and we get the same minimum variance portfolio weights of 5 divided by 6 for asset A and 1 divided by 6 for asset B. Now the portfolio mean return is 3.3%, but the portfolio standard deviation is still zero. So the minimum variance or minimum risk portfolio has a gain of 3.3% for all possible outcomes. However, we still have asset B, which has a gain of either 5%, 10% or 15%, so clearly asset B is still a better investment, even though asset A now has positive returns. So what if the two assets have overlapping returns? We still have the same returns for asset B, but now let's say that asset A has return of 6%, 5%, or 4%, with a mean of 5%. The minimum variance portfolio still has asset A weight 5 divided by 6, and the asset B weight is 1 divided by 6. Now the portfolio mean is 5.8% for the, this minimum variance portfolio, and the standard deviation is still zero. However, asset B has a gain of either 5%, 10%, or 15%, so if it is 10% or 15%, it is clearly better than the minimum variance portfolio, of which has 5.8%, and only in the case where the outcome of asset B is 5%, uh, do we get a lower return than on the minimum variance portfolio, but it, it's slightly lower, so it's 5% instead of 5.8%. So, so asset B is clearly still a better investment. So why is asset A in the minimum variance portfolio? It is because asset A has a low standard deviation of 1%, while asset B has 5%. The asset returns are anti-correlated, so if we combine them, we lower the standard deviation for the portfolio. The mean variance efficient frontier is optimized for low variance, so the efficient frontier will have combinations of, of the two assets. So this is why asset A is in the minimum variance portfolio, because we are optimizing or minimizing for the variance. So the conclusion is that the variance is not a risk measure. The variance measures the spread of possible returns. It doesn't take the probability of loss into account, and it doesn't take the joint probability of different asset returns into account. This criticism also holds for other distributions, for example, the normal distribution, which you can check out for yourself. And it even holds if we know the true distribution of asset returns. So, the mean variance portfolios are not optimized for risk in the traditional sense of the word, which means the chance of injury or loss. These short examples were taken from this paper, which you can find on this internet website, and the link is also provided below the video.